So what I want to do now is look at an ice cream cone. An ice cream cone where you get three flavors. If you have vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, right? I can show you that if I said vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, I could also go vanilla, strawberry, chocolate. I could go chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Not, not certified value, of course. Anyway, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. And then I hadn't done any yet that started with strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, vanilla, chocolate. Now tip your head. And that could be the order, you don't want your ice cream cone this way, but that could be the order of the scoops on the cone. When you get a cone with three on it, they'll say, you know, which one's on top if you're getting two? Or what order do you want it in? Maybe it doesn't matter to you, right? But there you have the six ways, just like I did with the colors of the dice when we did six, six ways you can put them on there. That's a factorial problem. So if you wanted to get three scoops of ice cream, how many orders could you put them in? Even though you say, I need vanilla, I need chocolate, and I need strawberry. If all that's important is those are the three scoops that are on there, then all you gotta do is tell them that, they don't have to ask you which, and they don't have all this to deal with. Because they give you what I would call a set of three ice cream flavors. But, if the order matters, then you're gonna have something which is more than a set, it's an ordered set of three. Now, if that's all they have is vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, and if you must take one of each, then all they have to do is decide what order it's in, and if you don't care what order it's in, they'll just give you all three. This leads us to permutations and combinations. With our workings with permutations and combinations, we are not gonna allow you to get two scoops of the same flavor. But we are gonna let you get flavor choices from more than just three. You're getting a triple cone in all likelihood here, right? They have to be three different flavors, but some places have a lot of flavors that they can offer you, okay? So Baskin Robbins used to have 31 flavors, right? If you can't have a repeat, how many stacked ice cream cones order counts can you get that are different, right? So we'll set up, we're getting three scoops. And the first scoop can be one of how many flavors? Don't worry about what's gross or what you don't like or what you're allergic to. How many flavors overall can we make for a sample space? Like if I said, you have to have a 31 stacked ice cream cone, it's 31 factorial. Very tall, very messy, probably not gonna work. But, we're not going all the way, we're just doing three. 31 is the first. Can't get that flavor anymore. Whatever flavor it was, does not matter which one flavor it was, leaves you 30 to choose for your second flavor. So the first flavor goes right onto the cone. The second flavor goes on to the first scoop, must be a different flavor. So it can't be one of 31, because one of them's gone. 31 minus one is why we put it here, 30. If you want to stop the tape, and, uh, the video and decide what's going in the next spot, you're welcome to do it. But now when we go back for the third scoop, it can't be the same as the first one. It can't be the same as the second one that sits on top of the first one but still there are a bunch of flavors available on the list. And you know, the 31 drops if they run out of ice cream flavors for one day and they don't replace it with something else. But when they're fully loaded, there you go. We would multiply those together. So I'll write the question about the 31 flavors. With 31 flavors available, how many ways can we get a three scoop cone when the three flavors must be different. Now, if you don't think it matters what's on the top, I'm guessing you either have not been to an ice cream store with a child, or you happen to go with a very well-behaved child or something like that. But it's easy enough to just sit there for a little while and wait till the kid starts crying because they wanted the chocolate on top of the vanilla. They only had two and it was in the wrong order and they lose their, we'll say, minds. But anyway, um, that's what we're looking at. We want to make sure that the child knows exactly what they want, including the order of what's on the bottom, what's in the middle, what's on the top. That is called a permutation. That's a word we probably don't hear often and haven't heard before. But I like to call it permuting, since it winds up as a permutation. It's a permutation because you didn't use the whole list of ice creams. You went down the list in order, and then you stopped. Maybe you did 
3130 for two scoops, 313029 for three scoops. You want to get daring, 313928. I hope you get a bowl under it. But it stops. Remember, you can't go 31 tall and have it stand up. That would be back to our factorial where you use the entire list. So we use a partial list of putting things in order. Numbers are important. N is the sample size. And R, and there's no N in that whole thing, but N is the sample size, what you can draw from for your list. I have to call that the full list. R is how many slots to fill. Now what we had to do there was somehow this 31 factorial got me to where I needed to be. Let's look at what we have. We have 31 factorial, or nice, I should have written, let's do that right, I'm already messing up. 31 factorial. You want to go all the way down the list, stack them all, 31 factorial, that is too much. What happens is if you look at that, 31 factorial is actually 31 times 30 times 29 times 28 factorial. Now you wouldn't think of this on your own, but I'm telling you it's true, because down here we have 28 factorial. And those, as long as they are, 28 down to 1 are identical. So that would cause me to cancel those out and get what we need, which is 31 times 30 times 29. So what happened? Right, because these could then be canceled out and leave me only that with a 1 on the bottom. Interesting to me. So now, that's my N, 31. So I went to 31 and somehow I knocked off 28. The other thing I have here, not here, N is 31, R is 3. So, if I have my 31 factorial over 28 factorial, then I got it. Because the 28 factorial will knock out everything from 28 down and everything from 28 down. Even though I could write them out, cancel them one by one, be there for a while, waste a lot of paper, maybe make a small mistake and get frustrated, but 28 factorial is the same when each of them has them written. So that's going to get me to where I need to be. Look what happened. 31 factorial is n factorial. And this right here, 28, is 31 minus 3. That's n minus r. You might want to put those in parentheses, not that you'd have to. And that's a permutation. It would be written like this. P, permutation, start me off with n and draw from it a cutoff list of length r. And there is your definition of a permutation formula. Now it's best to understand that a permuted list is a full list where you only start the beginning with a full opportunity and you cut off the end when you get enough spaces filled. And that's how we would do it. So if we want to look at how did that happen, how did he get 31p well, n gets to go right in as 31 factorial. n minus r, I'll write them both. 31 minus 3 in parentheses factorial. Of course, we've got to do the parentheses first. 31 factorial, 28 factorial. Okay. Now, I want 28 factorial to match on the end of both the top and the bottom. So I go 31 down to 30, down to 29, which would then be followed by 28, and I'm not going to keep writing. I write that factorial on my line. And since I get to choose where to put it, why don't I put my 28 factorial right under there? And that will get what we need. By the way, how many is that? Right? We can do it a bunch of ways. Here we go. I'm using the fancy calculator, but not because it's fancy. It's just right here at hand. And go 31 times 30 times 29. You can do this with the cheapest of calculators. Should get 26970 for 26,970. 
Great. If you have a scientific calculator capable of doing a factorial, you can do this. Right? I'm doing it with this, but even a scientific one, as long as it has parentheses and it's got the factorial key on it, then you can go through that and work it this way. This is 31, <coughs> 31 permuted with a 3, 31. Now I need my factorial key. So I go find it as needed on whatever calculator I have. I want to divide that by, and I open parentheses, and I want to put 31 minus 3. Or you could put in 28 if you can do 31 minus 3 yourself, which most of us can, and that's no problem. Then you got to close the parentheses and make the 28 appear, and then go back and get your factorial on that other calculator. And now this is saying, let me have 31 factorial over 31 minus 3 factorial. That, you get it. 26,970. That's good enough. You can do that with what I now call a dollar store calculator because the Dollar Tree sells scientific calculators. I'm not sure if they do factorials, but anyway, a scientific calculator with the parentheses and the factorial key can do that. Okay, what could I do? Of course, I could cancel 28 factorial off each and use a you know, calculator from my checkbook to do 31 times 30 times 29 and get what I want. That's fine too. And you'll see me doing all this much of it by hand you can use the technology as strong as you have it. Wouldn't it be great if some kinds of calculators could handle NPR, do permutation, where I gave them N, told them I wanted a permutation, gave them R. That's what this can do. Okay? A scientific calculator generally cannot, some of them do. Those are the calculators that cost between $10 and $30. These that cost upwards you know, of $80 to $150, they do. They gotta do math, they gotta do it in probability, but they want me to do NPR, they want me to do a permutation. So if you have one of these, you can take it out and do what I'm doing. If you want to skip when I put this away, that's okay. But here's what I would do. I want to know how to do a permutation on this kind of calculator. So I clear everything off that I have in case there's something that's bothering me. All right, and I put in a 31, and I go to math, then I go to probability. So that I've taken you before, look down the list, and notice NPR. That's permutation. So go down to NPR, and now hit enter. But it needs more. It needs a number to be the follow-up to NPR, right? It needs 31 permutation. Give it the three. Enter 29, uh, 26, 9, 7, again. So you have the freedom to use this calculator if you have it. But I don't insist that you own one. Okay? You have the opportunity if you can do factorials on your calculator to use them to get the work done. Actually, if you do that, you can set up either this or this to lead you to that. And if you don't have that opportunity, then you need to be familiar with what I had to learn back in the 19-somethings, uh, how to cancel out those matching factorials. And I'll show you a few maneuvers that I learned back in the day with that. But really, you can use your technology once you decide what kind of question you have, and you know I have the technology, I know how to use it, and I can match it to the problem, then you're set. So that's how we would do permutations. So I want to take two letters out of a set of five, and I want to make two letter words out of them. So two letters out of a set of five. Now five is the bigger number. That'll be my N. That's what I'm drawing from. And we'll go ahead with that. So how many two letter I'll put words in, in uh, quotes because it's not really words, but how many two letter pairs? Nope, don't want to call it that either, right? Two letter words. How many two letter words can be made from a set of Five letters, no repeats, right? Well, I'll draw the sample space, and then we will also take a quick look at how to get that with a permutation, OK? So I can start with A, and I can get A with B, A then C, A then D, and A then E. I can get some, I 
am not allowed to go double A, right? Now I'm going to start something to go with B first. B with A, no B, B. B, C, B, D, B, E. Now I'm going to start with C. C, A, C, B, no C, C. C, B, C, E. Then I'm going to go with D first. D followed by A, D followed by B, D followed by C, no D, 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 E, and finally with E. E followed by A, E followed by B, E followed by C, even E followed by D, but no E, E. That looks like something's missing. But if I did 5 times 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that'd be 25, but there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 missing. 25, take away 5, gets me 20. You go like this. Add the 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Or add the 4s this way. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. How about 4 times 5? 20, right? Um, but why 4 times 5? Well, there are 4 in each one of these columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times it happens. 4 happening 5 times. You do the same way saying there are four rows. Of, there are, sorry, there are five rows with four, four times five, so it'll be that. So there they are. That's going to be helpful when we do something else in a little while as well. But n was five. R equals two. So we want to do five P2. And I will go without any calculator. I will say I have my five factorial over my five minus two factorial. That's five times four times 3 factorial, I happen to know that that's making 3 factorial. I will cancel those out. I'll get 20 over 1. And you just see how I had to do these things back in the 19-somethings. Okay? You can go ahead and get that 20 using the technique that works with the technology you plan to use. Okay? If you're going to use a scientific calculator on all your homeworks and all that, you can use it on your homeworks, quizzes, final exam, exam. You want to do it with a graphing calculator, you can do that. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You have a video that shows you how to get through that process. Roll back and look at that again. Get used to it, make notes of it, and so forth. But I don't have to go through all the different ways. But this is a list of five. We're only going two places deep. So we're going two places deep. The first was one of five. And the second one can't be the same letter, so the next one is one of four. Five times four equals 20. Permutation. So here's a permutation problem that I'm not going to put up the sample space for you. I'm going to leave that up there because we'll use it for our 20 a little bit. But I want you to know, and what may be going on in some developed nations and the way leaders of nations are behaving may have some of you politically being uncertain if this is true. But if you're the president, you can't be vice president. And if you're the vice president, you can't be secretary of state. I'll leave it at that. You need to have that as the foundation for what's about to happen in this problem. How many ways can a president, and once the presidency is won, you can't run for any other office, a vice president, and a secretary be chosen from 20 candidates. Now what happens in this election is you say, I'm a candidate and I will take any of the three offices. And the first thing they do is they decide who the president is. Once they decide who the president is, that president can not be the VP. Once the VP is found, the president and the VP cannot be the Secretary of State. What's going on here? How many possible people are there to be in there? How far down the list are we filling slots? I might 
can't say only, but definitely the answer for that question itself is three. That gets me 20 P3. It's important to recognize that the question says I want to get a president, and then I want a vice president, and then I want a secretary. It's also important no person can hold more than one of these jobs. 20 people to draw from, fill three slots. Do what you would do, then stop the tape, and see if you get the answer that's correct for that. You can roll back the tape if you need to as part of the learning process, but figure out how many ways can we do this? How many ways can I fill the first slot, and the select the second slot, and the third slot? Also go ahead, use your technology. Stop the video, make your attempt. Once you start me back up, here's what I would do. I might do this, 20 possible presidents, then that one can't win VP where there are 19. And then when 19, these two are out, I have 18 left and I would multiply those three together. Let's see what number we get. I would ask, how else might you have gotten it? Did you get the right answer? What would you do differently? Right? People might tell me that they went ahead and did their 20 factorial over 20 minus 3 factorial. 20, 19, 18. There they are. With 17 factorial. Okay, take these out. You don't need a factorial to finish. But 20 times 19 times 18. Could you do 20 factorial over Parentheses, 20 minus 3, close parentheses. Close parentheses and hit your factorial and hit equals? Yes. And can you go 20 and through the math codes? Yes. On a graphing calculator. Absolutely. So what's a combination? That's a permutation. It's a word we didn't know. Combination is a word a lot of people didn't know walking into their class today or turning on your computer today or whatever would happen in general when you're learning. Permutation tends to be a new word for most people. Combination is a word most of us have heard in our normal lives. So, here's the thing. A combination lock, they used the name wrong. It's actually a permutation lock. Whether it's rotating dials on a bike lock or spinning the wheel like that. The weird thing is on one of those spinny combination locks, it is allowable for you to have the same number show up again. So that's not even truly a combination or a permutation lock. But they use it wrong. Because now, we're going to take a look at what are combinations. So I'll shorten this up. But combinations and permutations do go really well together, so I want to keep them together. Okay. A combination is a set. of equally useful chosen members from a larger, in quotes, larger sample space. Equally useful, equal, they have the same thing. A set you're either in the set or you're not, right? So with a set, order doesn't count. different than a permutation. So if I want to know how many combinations can I get out of that, I don't have to redraw the sample space, so that's why I kept it here. How many two-letter sets can be made from five letters? You can't repeat. So we are still dealing with this 20 maybe, 
But now let's say I got a rule that's going to make sure that I don't repeat myself. I am only going to take values for my sets in alphabetical order because there are only two. There are other ways when you know you go with other things, but I don't want one where it's backwards. So A B A C A D and A E. There's four. Not taking that one, that's three. B, C, B, D, B, E. Not taking C, A, or C, B, but I will take C, D, and C, E from the ones that started with the letter C as in Charles. Not D, A, D, B, or D, C, that's a skip. D, E is there. And if I want to represent this, I don't get any that start with E. So I get four, seven, nine, ten. I get ten. And so what happens is, AB is the same set as BA. BD, boy dog, is the same set as dog boy. Because if you're in the set, getting there is the win. So all that happens is you make it into a club of equals when you're part of a set and when you're looking at a combination. So a combination is a set. So when you hear someone saying, uh, that's a strange combination, it can't have anything to do with the order you put them in, but even which elements have made their way into a set. And that's what they're called elements to get their way into a set. So now, I want to ask the same question. We have 19 people, I'm sorry, we have 20 people that are trying to become members of the board of their club. How many ways, and there are different ways, can we elect three members to the board of a 20-member club. That is a combination. I'm not going to draw it out in sample space for you and all that, although we did look at a sample space here of why we had what we did with the A through E letters and looking at the sets. What happens here is we have to get three people elected. So it goes like this. 20 factorial lines them all up. Seventeen factorial cuts off the back, right? The people that aren't selected. The first loser to the last loser, whoever didn't make it, right? Coming in fourth, not on the board, that's a loss. Coming in last place loses just as much. First, second or third, all equal winners. That's what the permutation would get for us. But now, we want to shrink this number more because of what's going on inside the group. There were three people, right? How can you put three people in order? Three factorial. This deals with cutting the last 17 people completely off the list. This deals with how many ways that list could be put in order. By dividing the bigger number, you get a smaller number and now you get how many different sets you can have. So what does that mean? Well, what would that become? I'll find the answer for you. 20. <coughs> I see 17 is the large one, so you can anticipate maybe a little bit of what I'm getting to. 17 factorial. Here's the 17 factorial, and the other thing is 3 factorial. So these are going out. And I'll get 20 times 19 times 18 over. I'll write out the 3 factorial. This is the way I had to do it in the 19-somethings, right? And uh, there they are, and I'll write it again, 20 times 19 times 18, 3 times 2 times 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3, that's a 6. Divide by 2, divide by 2, that's a 3. And we'll get what we get here. This is 380 times 3, 1040. So <coughs> what is that? This is N C R. N is still your sample size. R is still how big of a group you're taking. And clearly that's N. We know this to be N minus R. Because that's what it would be if it was a permutation. We take the permutation and we <coughs> descramble it. And that's the formula that we have for combinations. <coughs> NCR can also be written 
like this. They don't have a fancy that I know of. Oh, you're right. This is the way I learned NCR combinations were in that kind of notation where you have a tall pair of parentheses, N on top, no line in between them, it's not a fraction. N on top will be your sample space, and R will be how big of a set you're going to take. You want to see some weird stuff? How about this? 5 choose 0. Let's do what it's got. 5 factorial. 5 minus 0, 5 factorial. R is 0, 0 factorial. Okay, 5 factorial cancels with 5 factorial. We got 1, 1 and 1, that's 1. What? 5 choose 0 is 1? How many ways can you choose no one out of 5? The answer is one way. It's not 0 as an answer. There's one way to do it, which is put no one forward. You say we're going to choose 0 officers. There you go. There's one way to do it. Don't take anyone. <coughs> How many ways can we choose all seven officers? Let's go with seven choose seven. Seven factorial. Okay. Seven minus seven right there. Then a seven factorial. So we have seven factorial there. We have zero factorial here. We have seven factorial there. These aren't to be memorized. Don't need to be written on your note card. But what we get How many ways can I choose everybody? There's only one way to choose everybody. <coughs> they are working together. There's a way where you chose nobody out of the five. There's one way to do that. And all five were losers, if you want to view it that way. How about everybody wins? Seven people, and they all get to be in. Everybody wins. And there's one way to do that with no losers. Okay, you can't do seven choose eight. You can't go beyond what you have. But the zero factorial plays a heavy role and some of those things. They compute out to what you're trying to do. You have your calculators to do the jobs with that. I want to take a look on the graphing. I think that if you can do the permutation one successfully, you can also do this one. But I'm going to take this one through for you. Make sure you keep your whole denominator in parentheses. That's a mistake people often make. So I'm going to do it not just graphic calculator, but I'm going to do it with a factorial key right now. I'm going to do my 20. And I'll go to math and go to probability and I'll get to the factorial. Enter. Then I want to divide by. I'm going to open a pair of parentheses. And I'm going to open another pair of parentheses. I've got one pair of parentheses over my denominator covering the whole thing. And then n goes into 20 minus 17. Oh, tw sorry, 20 minus 3. My bad, I was thinking I had a little too much. 20 minus 3. Now I need a factorial, so I go find it. Math, go get it. And you can do this with a regular scientific calculator as well. You may be seeing something attractive on the graphing calculator if you have one. And then I want to multiply that by r factorial, which is my 3. Go get my factorial, however I get it on my calculator. Enter that, and now I've got to close my parentheses. This is what makes sure that I have both values in the denominator. And I'll hit enter. And let's see, 20 factorial. So did I do that wrong? Let me just see. 20 times 19 times 18, I got that. Let's see, n factorial 20. Let's see what I got here. 20 math factorial divided by 17 math will work for factorial, enter and divide by, it's another way to do this, 3 factorial, math over down factorial, enter, 1140, I guess I did my math wrong here, what, what did I do, this was 380 times 3, yeah, uh, yeah, that's 1140. So, we get to see what I do in the classroom here on the video. I think I see them in there. When I make a mistake, I don't go, oh no, we got to erase the whole video. I use a purple marker in class. I don't erase your memory. I don't redo the whole video. This is 11. 
for you. I'm ineducable. I don't learn about that. Yeah, I should have used the calculator. Probably always should. When it's available, use it if you can rely on it and know you're going to type the keys right. 1140 is where that thing's got to go. All right, so 1140 is the right answer that we should have gotten. You might have been questioning that if you're watching the video for a few minutes, like, oh, jeez, it's not, it's okay. But that is my fault. All right, let's try 20 factorial. Uh, that's the part that I got to give me the wrong answer before, but it was a different wrong answer. 20 factorial divided by double parentheses 20 minus 17 close the parentheses hit up the factorial and then I want to have that times 3 factorial so I keep it in the outer pair of parentheses close my parentheses after the 3 factorial and hit equals. Ooh, danger, Will Robinson, that's not so too good. Uh, I'm going to try that again. 20, but I think I know what has to happen here and I'm going to use it as advisory for everyone. 20 factorial just fine. Divided by, open parentheses, I have no problem with that. Open another pair of parentheses and go 20 minus 3. Back then, close that up. I didn't. What happened there? That's weird. Twenty. Oh, double parentheses. Twenty minus three. Close parentheses. Up in the factorial math. Get back there. Multiply. I think leaving out the multiplication sign, which would normally be acceptable causes a problem on this if you don't do it. So the denominator also has in there a three math go around and find the factorial. Close the parentheses, 1140. Okay, so now that's why maybe you don't want to rely so heavily on your ability to type stuff in perfectly. But also here, there's an NCR key in the math probability section. Let's begin with 20. Go to math, go to probability, look down at the third one where NPR worked before, now we got NCR. We have to know that this is a group of people we're creating. And so we've got NCR, which I will elect, I'll hit enter, put in the three, hit enter, it gives me the 1140 and done. Okay. NCR available on this, use of your calculator if you refuse to do that stuff carefully can lead to some troubles. So you might want to do this stuff out somewhat by hand, somewhat on the calculator. You need to find out which way it works for you. But what's the big deal? Combination is a set of equals. Permutation is a cutoff list where order counts, right? There are different jobs for different people. It's the difference between a permutation and a combination. Some people think it's a two-word answer. Oh, in permutations, order counts. That may not be enough to get you going. They definitely have different formulas. They get different answers. They serve different purposes. I'm about the purposes. Combination defines a set of people that are equals that win, and the permutation is cutting a list short when you're filling spaces. So, we're going to do two questions. We're going to do eight horses are in a race, and you have to decide the set of horses that finish in the top three. If you win that, you win a bet called a trifecta or a triple at the race course, and you collect money from people who lost by not picking the right set of three horses. So, we're going to do that one right now. And the question is, the most important thing about what we're lear looking at learning here is permutation and combination. Decision, roll back the tape, see what you decide. 
stop the tape, make your decision, proceed to get the number. Back on tape with me? Okay, it's a group. That's a set, that's a combination. You go like this, and whichever technology you want it to work with, that's going to get me 8 factorial, and it's going to get me 5 factorial, 3 factorial. 8, 7, 6, 5 factorial, 5 factorial, 3 factorial, gone and gone. 8 times 7 times 6 over 3 times 2 times 1. Divide by 3, divide by 2, 56. That's a combination because it's a group. Answer is 56 using whichever technique you did. But the big thing here is did you know it was a combination or permutation? It's almost assumed that you will know n in this is 8 and r is 3. You've got a group of 8 trying, 3 are going to succeed. How many ways can three horses of 8 finish first, second, and third? We're still going for three places. But here's the story. What makes this different? Why is this not a set? First place pays $1,000 to the horse. Second place pays $600. Third place, $400. After that, nobody gets any money. But are the three winners identical? Are they treated the same? or are we cutting the list short? Basically, we put all the horses out there, they come in, we take their winners, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place, and we would only care about the first three, and more importantly, first is different than second, and is different than third, and that's what makes this, n is still eight, r is still three, eight and three, it's a permutation, right? We want three spots out of eight, so you want to go 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial, 8 factorial over 5 factorial, 8, 7, 6, 5 factorial. You can use your technology. Fifty-six, we looked, we saw 56 before. And it just happens that in this case, we're going to multiply that by 6 because there's Six ways, A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, B, A, C, A, B. Six ways those could come up. And here we get 336. And I hope that this demonstration gives you somewhat of an idea of the difference between a permutation and a combination, as well as how to get the numbers resulting, right? When we got, when we earlier on learned the permutation, that definitely started n factorial, but it only had n minus r factorial. It didn't do double division. Combinations, I'll start at n factorial. Had the same n minus r factorial, but then it also divided by n factorial. Remember, you do get to use a note card on your exams. So you'll be able to put these on there. You're still going to need something that has you knowing the difference between a permutation and a combination. So that's what we have. That wraps up our lecture two.